Hi, this is Mark Lockley from Snooker Crazy. Um, I've been asked for some time now to pop a queue up that uh, we might have refinished and just a quick explanation around some of the things that we do. So uh, this is one that I've recently done. Uh, it's just about finished now apart from a polish. Uh, apologies for the poor light in here but uh, it's the only place I can do it at the minute. Um, this queue here is around about uh, four to five years old. Uh, it was purchased from us. Uh, it's a sported tamarind butt on the queue on an ebony ebony butt surrounding that and then it's uh, an, ash, an ash shaft. Uh, it's owned by one of the local pool players and uh, it's regularly used so he's using this at least four times a week he said sometimes more so it's well used queue and over the sort of last four or five years uh, I think he said it had been dropped a couple of times it's got a few scratches and scrapes on it but he mainly came because uh, on the back of it on one of the feathers as he's queuing over some of the balls he can actually feel uh, the change from where the ash has dropped down a little bit so it's like a ridge on there and you could actually feel it quite pronounced so um, he brought it in for that but mainly just have a look over it and then give it a quick service so what sort of problems have we found well first you can't see I missed the cues obviously finished but the first thing if you just about see it I'll get my finger in there there was a big chip out of the tamarind tamarind can be quite brittle at times and I don't know whether it's just been dropped or just touched it was difficult to say but um that certainly came out and you could feel it um the badge itself the tamarind had worn down slightly and you could actually feel the badge which put some players off but i mean it's nice and smooth now and just up here there was quite a sizable dent which is not really where the hand would feel it but if you're running your hand up and down like i do sometimes you can actually feel it so there's a big dent there Now the shaft, obviously we suggest oiling it every year. Um, most people don't, judging by the amount of cues we sell. But um, if you don't, you don't really sort of notice too many things. And you lose that oil and the oil obviously protects it from moisture. So if you're continually cleaning the shaft, especially with um, a damp rag, you're going to basically wash all the way through it and you've got no nothing after that. And then the, the, the damp rag, if you like, well then the water will go into the shaft. So it does need that bit of protection. And this one, as far as I know, I don't remember seeing it um, for the shaft being maintained at all. But, as I say, that's that's pretty normal. Um, so it's, it's certainly not unusual. Right. Uh, next part, really, was all the grain. Although you could slightly see the arrows and the grain on the side, lots of it had come out. So, over the four years, it's probably just washed out with the cleaning. Once that's out, obviously the ash will suffer a bit. Now in between this grain in there, the grain filaments come out. A lot of the actual ash above that uh, is quite soft. So a lot of that is actually worn down. So when you look at the back, which is where he was queuing, and he was actually queuing over these two parts, this was the one that was bothering the most. Because when he actually had to bridge over a ball, he said this was the bit that he would always fill. And that was quite pronounced so you get uh, the ash just there and this grain filler had dropped down if you like in level so it all come out so this part was more pronounced than that so he's actually going over a ridge and just going over that ridge when you're queuing is obviously taking his concentration off playing the ball as it would so what you can't see is on the second arrow up there was quite a major gouge right across there that was one of the things that was a pain and about probably about half a dozen half a dozen little dents as you go up the shaft and there was one slight hole um probably wouldn't have even noticed it but it looked like it had obviously touched something fairly sharp and pointed but i normally sort of as i strip things off try and have a good look and see what there is to repair because if you've got it if you've got it stripped down it's just best to do it all in one go but the biggest, as I say, the biggest problem really for me was the fact all the grain filler had worn down and come out so much that when you're queuing on the back of the queue on this bit, all of these then became a ridge. And when you get grain as it comes out, say these parts, it um, each one of these small lines, you can almost rub your nail over it, and it just becomes really gritty, and you start to feel every part of the queue. Um, but it's really it should be sort of super smooth 
So, what did we do? To say what we did with the chip, there's many ways we could have done that, but we didn't want to go too mad at it, so we've got an epoxy resin over that, because a lot of this Q, the way the tamarin is, it makes it look almost transparent on the top. So even putting a slight repair, you can't feel it, it's all nice, nice and level. You can see it, but if, if you're looking closely. But it's um, so transparent, you get all at the bottom. The, the badge, I actually filed that all the way down and then went through the different grades up to a polishing paper. So this is now nice and smooth. Um, whether it bothered him before, difficult to say. But uh, yeah, it feels pretty good now. We get up to something like a 3000 grit. I'll, I'll always start on that with a file, a second cut file, as they call it. Uh, and then go through the grades, probably uh, sometimes a 400. But I'll generally, if it's an older badge that just wants a bit of finishing, I'll just lightly do a 600 and work up to a 1200 and then go to a 3000 for those of you that want to have a go at the acrylic ones. Um, the dent itself was a bit of a pain to be fair, um, but in the end it, it wouldn't come out with just dampening it down, so I steamed that. Now you got, if you're going to do something like steam it, you really want to be a bit more experienced at it, because the first thing you do when you start putting steam around these splices and laminates is they, they want to come out, and then obviously you've got another thing to repair. But um, if you're careful, and you've been doing a few, you know how far to push it, but you can't even feel that now, it's just completely gone. But... Um, yeah, if you're a bit careful with that. Ebony was surprisingly good. Uh, normally expect to find a couple of dents on a queue that age, but nope, nothing at all. So say we had that gouge. The gouge, again, was something like the steam, so you can't even see it now, um, which is nice. So that, that took a little bit of going over, but just do it, let it dry, come back again, and keep coming back again until, until it came out. And the same with all well, the, all the smaller dents, uh, I didn't steam them. So I mean, sometimes I just, just do it. It depends how I feel, really, what I think the wood will take. Um, but the other ones, well, you can't see any of them now. Uh, what I did with those is just soak a couple of cotton buds, tape it to the shaft, leave it overnight, go back. Normally it's gone into the wood and swelled out enough that it brings it out. If it doesn't, I generally leave it another day if I need to. Depends on how quickly the cue's got to be done. Um... You know, once the wood's out, it's ready to um, dry it and just sand it a little bit. And then you can bring the wood back down to the level that it was prior to any dents and scratches. But it'll swell it if you just put some water in there. But obviously first you've got to strip the cube, which I did. But this one was just 600, just had to skim it off. Um, what do we do then next? Uh, let's roll it over to the back. So you've got the front of the cube, which didn't didn't have any real issues for him. You know, obviously I could fill the arrows, but he didn't have too many. But most of it, as you turn it over, was the grain filler. So the grain filler around these bits had all come out, making this... Well, some of it's pronounced, but basically it's, it was just something that you could fill. And I say again, this was just very pronounced. So as you went over, it became like a ridge. So when you look at all this queuing part, you had a ridge up, up there. And another one. Where are we? there and that's pretty much about it but if you actually run your hands up you could you could feed it on these as well so whether it was a cleaning thing it's, it's difficult to say really but um to say the grain had come out but basically you could feel everything and if you go around the side all of the grain lines you could feel all of them and the softer lighter ash in between obviously that had sunk a little bit so you had all different levels on the same queue most people just get used to it over the years i've had quite a few and if a tip changes even recently and you think well that's quite an expensive queue and you can feel everything on it so the guys must have just got used to it whereas I like the whole thing to just feel level. Um, now this was quite a pain to get it up. Once I stripped it, it was lots and lots of coats of sand and sealer so I started with regraining it completely so I was happy with that. And then I've got sand and sealer that we put on and that, if you imagine that just as a clear type um, liquid that goes off. Uh, you build the levels up with that and generally I like to think that we'll only do one or two. Uh, I think I was probably up around maybe eight, nine or ten minutes. It was a lot. And I had to work individually on each arrow just to give them extra, bring them up higher. Then once they'd swelled and bring the levels back down to try and get them all the same levels. And once they're all the same levels, then I had a further couple of coats so I could sand it down again so it would feel just nice and smooth. Once we're at that point there, we've got the grain filler in so we can seal the arrows that are nice. It brings all the 
or the blackout if you like or the figuring uh, and the sanding sealer really just helps it get nice and level again then I'll give it a nice slight sanding over over the top again and then you're ready really to put whatever you want I like to put a wax oil on there um, mainly because we have worked hard at building our own one over the last few years um, and the wax sits nicely on this I mean people think wax is sticky but if you get the right mixture it's actually quite nice to work with and most people don't even know what it is but they just want the fact that it's nice and smooth and this certainly is so it's had two coats of our wax oil and I'll burnish it in between so I'll actually burnish it and then at the end I'll actually cut it back with 10,000 grit steel wool and that makes it lovely and slippery and we do similar on the butt sometimes you can use a, a polishing sort of agent on there um, I like the butt I like, obviously like the shaft of the cue to be nice and smooth sometimes although I go for a matte finish on, on these ones I prefer that personally because it gives a better feel um, some people just go high and heavy with nice finishing oils and it can make them quite sticky but this for me has got the best feel of all of them so although we give it a finish on there you know above the sand and seals I like a wax oil one on that as well uh, as I say I might use a polish of some description it really depends what the wood is if it's if you did something like a macassar or something like that um, I would probably just use the oils in the wood some woods have natural oils so I'm just going to move the camera over. I'm doing this on my phone so sorry about the pictures but let's go over something like the middle one there I would probably use its own its own oils I'll keep the camera on it so this one as it has a lot of oil actually in the butt itself um, so probably use that but um, you can tell that it's a lovely bit of wood this so that I felt just um, just looks a little bit better with the, the oil wax mixture right I think that's probably about it as I say I've had a few guys asking just for explanations of cues I, I, I don't really get a lot of time to, to show lots of videos of them doing the whole way through if you go on my Facebook page which is the snooker crazy group uh, you'll find a few pictures here and there and a few of this what that's your cue actually um, so sometimes I get a chance to pop them up there and some sometimes about the wax and oils um, if not then go on snookercrazy.com and you'll be able to see some of the cues so there's a, if you look at some um, you know all of these cues are all finished in similar similar fashion but um, I I don't use just uh, the same finish on everything because it depends on the wood. But anyway, getting back to this cue, uh, that's nice and uniform all the way along. So I'm hoping that uh, it will be pleased with this one. So hopefully that will give the guys that wanted a, a quick explanation of what we do a bit of a better idea. Anyway, hopefully try and get a chance to do a few more videos and hope you um, found some of this one useful. See you on next video.